Uh, let me introduce you to Marissa. Marissa Constantinidis um, is the director of Cell Athens in Athens, Greece. She's a fantastic teacher trainer, and she has incredible displays blown by her presentations. So we'll continue with her. Just hope that everything is wonderfully tech-wise. <laughs> Get everything that uh, Ezra told you before. I'm going to teach you how to be an outstanding teacher. And all she said about wonderful atmospheres and rapport and all the sweet smiles and stuff is really not what makes a good teacher. Frown and scowl as much as possible. The class is not a fun fair as well. Uh, spread anxiety. Uh, Krashen doesn't know anything. He says zero anxiety. But your job is to keep your learners on, your, on their toes and to keep them wondering what you're going to do next, play next, so they're alert and they are learning. This uh, atmosphere um, is uh, a very, very overrated thing. Positive atmosphere never really helped anyone learn languages. Don't smile, don't laugh, you're not a clown, you're not a joker. Your job is to teach language, grammar, and vocabulary. They're not there for the good laughs. Be impatient. You only have 60 minutes. Give them tight limits. Be strict with your time limits. Remind them of the time limits every so often so that they're on their toes and they are alert. And where's the next slide? It should be coming up now. I'm a little bit impatient. Uh, threaten them with spot tests and do actually give tests. Give them tests every week, every Monday. Give them tests. Give them short quizzes. Give them tests when they're very young. Cambridge should have tests for toddlers as well. I don't know why they haven't introduced them yet. Don't laugh. This is serious. Threaten them. Threaten them at every opportunity. Um, spread terror and fear in your classroom because they're there to learn. They're not there to have a good laugh and to have uh, a good time. And also, give them some punishment. If they're unruly, you, you, should, you should have some, uh, some rules up your sleeve. Confuse them. Don't give them clear guidelines. You're not there to give them lessons in teaching methodology and free teacher training. Let them work it out on their own. It's a problem-solving oriented classroom, isn't it? So they should, they should be able to find out what, what they're supposed to be doing. Mix and match and marry groupings. Put all your shy, quiet learners in with your loudest ones, preferably the class clown. In this way, they're going to get some examples of good language use, and they're not going to talk anyway. Talking about choice, now that's another overrated area. You're paid to teach one class hour each time, aren't you? So giving them choice means you plan for two or three hours when you're only paid for one. You're the boatman and you give them the signal and they row and they work. Avoid eye contact. Familiarity breeds discontent. While they're talking, do something useful, write on the board, mark your homework, do some knitting. I don't know what you're going to do, but it's not your job to have deep eye and meaningful looks with your students. Sit still. Stay, sit behind your desk. This is where the students will look for you, and they should be able to find you. What from the class, like a wheelie dervish, you're supposed to be a teacher, you're behind your desk, and that's where the students found, find you. If you decide to move, pounce. And so they're alert and anxious, and they, you know, they don't know what's coming to them next. And if they're doing some useful group work, butt in, tell them some choice episodes from their personal life, and don't allow them to talk too much because they need input. Pay attention to your favorite students. They're the ones who are going to do the work anyway. And uh, keep your attention focused uh, even better on the ones who are going to bring you gifts, preferably gold and diamonds, not just uh, apples for the teacher. And use your voice. It's your tool. It's your instrument. Learn to speak loud and clear. Your students should be able to hear you from wherever they are in the classroom. You shouldn't 
whisper and have a laid back tone and kind of monitor softly. Just be loud and clear. That's what you're there for. They want to hear you. Being fair is um, not really uh, on. Uh, you are fair to the students who are hard working. Ask questions of your students, put them on the spot, ask difficult questions of your weaker students to motivate them to study more. Not your good ones, because they're going to study anyway. Do not praise them. You give them the wrong information. If a learner makes a mistake, telling them, oh, you did very well with, you know, bravo for the effort, you know, is not on. You're giving them wrong information. Don't forget to laugh when they make a mistake, make comments about the low IQ, and also being courteous. You didn't train to be a diplomat. Uh, be as, as aggressive and assertive as you like. Don't call them now children soft, unless they are adults, in which case you can call them children. And finally, I think we're moving on to the next one. Do not give them too much feedback. Keep them in the dark. What's all this about giving them progress, a sense of progress? And if you do decide to give them some feedback, make it as mysterious as possible. If you write something, you know, make it sound like hieroglyphics. And they don't really need to know all the information. All the technology you need is right behind you. It's green, it's big, it never breaks down, it's cheap to maintain, and if it's scratchy, it will also keep them on their toes, it will keep them alert and attentive to you. All the rest of the newfangled is really not for you. And if you want to learn all these words of wisdom and learn all my methodology, here's my email and here's my Twitter handle and my blog and my website and my school, and you can come to my teacher training center and I can tell you a lot more about how you can become an outstanding teacher. Thank you very, very much.